Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mick. Welcome back to our video tutorial series on custom collection view layouts. In this video, you're going to begin working on the fifth and final layout of the series, the visually striking timber layout. You'll learn how to manipulate a cell's transform using its layout attributes, as well as how to work around the gotcha in UI collection view that can sometimes result in cells not being displayed properly. Here's what the app will look like at the end of this video. All the cells are now rotated 14 degrees counterclockwise and their frames have been inset slightly to make sure that they still reside within the bounds of the collection view. One of the properties on UI collection view layer attributes is the transform and this allows you to apply a 2D transform to the cell. In the case of the timber layout, we want to rotate each cell 14 degrees counterclockwise around its center point. And to do this, we'll use CG Affine Transform Mate Rotation, supplying the necessary angle. Now, that angle is expected to be in radians, so we'll add a utility function to the layout to convert between radians and degrees. There is currently a gotcha in UI Collection View, which can cause some cells not to be displayed if their bounds extend beyond the bounds of the collection view. And unfortunately, this is the case with our cells once they've been rotated. Luckily though, the fix is relatively straightforward. All we need to do is use CG Rect Inset to inset both the left and right sides of the cell by a small amount so that the bounds no longer extend beyond the bounds of the collection view once they're rotated. So I've got the sample app running here and as you can see, just like the ultra visual layout, it's displaying session details from our WDevCon. And what we want to achieve by the end of this video is we want the cells to be rotated counterclockwise by 14 degrees. And it's relatively straightforward to do that. So let's stop the app running and jump straight in. I've already created a subclass of UI Collection View Flow Layout and the Collection View is already set up to use this. So that's where we're going to be spending most of our time, but it's relatively little code to get this up and running. So as I mentioned in the slides, uh, we're going to use CG if I'm transform make rotation to apply the rotation to the cell. But that method expects radians and we want to work with degrees. So the first thing we're going to do is add our utility function to the top of this class to convert degrees to radians. So just below the import, we can declare our function. And this will take a single parameter, which is degrees, and that's a double. And want it to return a CG float. We simply return CG float, and then we take the mpy variable and times that by degrees divided by 180. And with that in place, we can jump actually into applying that transform. So we're going to do this in layout attributes for elements in rect. So let's override that. And since we're using a subclass of UI Collection View Flow Layout, we can simply ask the super for the existing layout attributes. We don't have to calculate them ourselves as we've done in other layouts. And just remember that we need to cast the return value as an array of UI Collection View Layout Attributes. And then we need to make sure we return those from the bottom of that method. And now we have our layout attributes, we're just simply going to iterate over them and apply the transform. And we can apply that transform directly to the attributes. So attributes.transform equals CG affine transform make rotation. And then we're going to use our utility function to convert degrees to radians. And we want minus 14 so that we go 14 degrees counterclockwise. And if we build and run, you'll see that all our cells are now rotated counterclockwise by 14 degrees. But you may also notice that there is an issue if we scroll down, that every so often there'll be a cell that's missing. And this is the gotcha that we talked about in the slides. And this is because, as you can see, after being rotated, the cells bounds extend beyond the bounds of the collection view. So we're going to fix that by insetting the frame of the attributes, which is then applied to the cell. And we could do this using CG rect inset. 
So if we stop the app running, jump back to our layout. And we need to do this before we apply the transform. So at the top of the for loop, attributes.frame equals CG rect inset. And we can use the same frame, attributes.frame. And we're only interested in insetting the left and right sides. So we're going to use the DX parameter and we're going to use 12. And we'll leave dy as zero, which leaves the top and bottom where they are. Now, if we build and run again, you can see that the frames no longer extend beyond the bounds of the collection view. And then if we scroll down, we have all our cells. But there are a couple more things that we need to do while we're in here applying these transforms to the cells. The first thing is you can see that the top of the first cell is cut off after being rotated. And if we scroll right down to the bottom, it's the same with the last cell. And we can fix that by manipulating the collection views content inset property. So we can do that now. Stop the app running and open up tutorials view controller. And then find this line in view did load where we're already setting the content inset to move it down from underneath the status bar. And we just need to change this first value top from 20 to 50 and the bottom value make that 50 as well. And now if we build and run, you'll see that our top cell no longer extends beyond the top of the collection view. And if we scroll to the bottom, we've got the same down here as well. Now there's one final thing that I want to do in this video, and that's add some space between these cells, because at the moment they're a little bunched up and the layout and the, the visual look we're going for has some space. So if we stop the app running and open up main.storyboard, and then if we select our timber layout and then in the attributes inspector we're going to the size inspector and we can change the min space for lines to 16 and if we build and run one last time you can see now that we have a really nice amount of space between each cell and that's it for this video tutorial and as always we like to leave off with a challenge just like with the ultra visual layout, this layout is being used to display session details from RW DevCon. And each session has a corresponding photo. So your challenge this time is to add an image view to the cell and then update the UI collection view cell subclass so that it populates that image view with the photo each time the tutorial property is set. However, there is a catch. The photo shouldn't be rotated. So you'll need to figure out a way to counter the rotation of the cell and where the best place to do that is. As always, you'll find all the details in the challenge document, but do make sure you give it a go yourself first before reaching for the solution. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.